Hey guys, it's Marcus, and today we're going to be talking about how to repel with just a rope. So in a couple of previous videos, I've talked about how to repel without your normal repelling device. And if you want to see more information on that, I kind of have a bigger video that I'll stick up in the corner there. But in this one, we're going to talk specifically about how to repel when you don't have any equipment, no harness, no carabiners, just a rope and kind of a vertical distance that you need to get down. So right off the bat, guys, I want to say these repel methods are severely outdated. They're difficult, um, they're painful, and they're not super safe. So I can't really recommend using these. Um, if you do want to use them, make sure you practice them beforehand in safe terrain, like I'm doing here, so you know the motions, uh, you know what it feels like to repel with them, and you're just kind of familiar with all the motions. So there are two methods that we're going to go over for how to repel with just a rope. The first one, the Dolphur sits, I never know if I pronounce that right, but the Dolphur sits method is kind of a classic mountaineering rappel that was basically used before harnesses and friction device, uh, harnesses and friction devices were invented. And to do this, you want to take your rope. Now you can use, you see, I've got this set up in a double strand rappel. You can use a double strand. You can also use a single strand rappel. It doesn't matter. So you take your rope and you want to step it so that it goes underneath one of your legs. So here I'm using my left leg underneath like that. And then you create a loop in the bottom end of the rope, pass it over your opposite shoulder. So for me, that's my right shoulder. So under and around my left leg, over and around my right shoulder. And then you just kind of bring it under your armpit here and you hold that in your left hand. So left leg, right shoulder, left hand. And then once you've got that, I'll step nice and tight here to draw it up. You can then sit on your rappel like that, kind of tilted downwards, and you can actually lower yourself down the rope just like that. And there's enough friction created as the rope runs along your body that it will slow you down to rappel. Now, this is really uncomfortable. Um, the ropes running along here, there's your, basically your entire weight is resting on your shoulder. So while you can hold that position, it's not a very comfortable one to sit in. And you can probably hear that in my voice. And, oh, slip there. That's why I'm doing such a short rappel because I really don't enjoy sitting there. So the downside of the Dolphur sits is that it's super uncomfortable and you're gonna get really bad rope burn on your shoulders and your leg, especially if you're not wearing. You can see I've kind of got pretty thick clothing here. However, the advantages of this is that you can perform it with just a single strand, right? So you just go through the exact same motions with a single strand of rope, and that will allow you to repel, just like that. So if you're ever in a situation where you're doing a longer repel, or you need to tie off your rope at the top, and you only have a single strand to repel with in a body weight repel, the Dolphur sets is really your only option. But if you can use both strands of rope, like I've got it set up here, you might want to consider the second rappel, which is called the South African rappel. The South African rappel, as I said, you basically use the rope to create a little bit of a harness for yourself, and then you lower yourself with that. So how you do that is you take your two strands of rope, step between them, and cross them behind your back, just like that. So that's just what I've got going on back there. You just cross the ropes. And then you take the bottom two pieces of rope, step so that kind of the lower end of the rope is between your legs, and then you pass it between your legs like that and bring it up behind you in your hand. So you can see that's in the front. And again, all I did there was I passed the rope behind my back, joined it together, and then passed it through my legs, and then you bring it back around. So you can see here, it kind of makes, I've got a bit of a waist belt. I've got my kind of leg belts here. The rope is kind of mimicking the shape that a harness would take if I were to, you know, wear a harness and actually repel. And with that, I can then tighten this up. And I can step on a little lopsided here, but I can just step on and I can sit here like this. And again, I can lower myself down very slowly. Now, again, guys, as you can probably tell, this is not a comfortable rappel to perform. 
um, the rope really digs into your back. It's also running right in between your legs, um, and that's not really a fun place to have stuff. So this is another uncomfortable rappel. However, it's probably a little more stable than the Dolphur sits is, just because, you know, it's around your back, it's around your legs. You can't really fall out of the rope, whereas the Dolphur sits, you're, you're off balance and you're tilted. So that is the advantage of the South African rappel is it's just a little more stable, maybe a little more comfortable, but again, it still really burns along your back. However, the disadvantages of this rappel is that, like I said, you need two strands of rope to be able to perform it. So if you're ever in a situation where you only have a single strand of rope, this rappel won't work. So those are the two methods that I have for rappelling with just a rope. Again, no carabiners, no harness needed. Once again, guys, this is a very much worst case scenario type rappel. If you ever find yourself in a situation where you have to choose between Dolphur sits rappelling down a cliff or even South African rappelling down a cliff or sitting tight and waiting for rescue. I would probably recommend that you sit tight and wait for rescue just because these techniques are so outdated. They're kind of not used anymore. They're unfamiliar to most people and they're just very difficult to pull off in a safe method. With that being said, however, there are some ways that you can rappel without using a rappelling device and still get down safely. And as I said before, this video is kind of just a short segment in a larger video I have that goes over all of those options. So if you want to check that out, if you want to learn some of the ways that you can rappel safely without a rope in case you ever need to, check out my other video up there. I go over Munter hitches and carabiner rappels as well as talking a little bit about these. Thanks for watching guys and don't forget to subscribe.